In this video, let's take a look at the Glasgow Coma Scale. The Glasgow Coma Scale seems to be very easy and straightforward, but for someone who does not use it every day, or for a student who's trying to read it for the first time, it might get confusing. And it's a very commonly asked question in your university exams or multiple choice questions of various exams. So we need to know this precisely, the exact scores. So there are three components in the Glasgow Coma Scale. It's the eye opening, the verbal response and the motor response. Earlier I used to get confused. Is it V6, M5 and E4 or what is it? E4, V5, M6. Yes, it's E4, V5, M6. And how do we remember that? Because if you look from top to bottom, we first have our eyes, then our mouth, then our hands. So we're going to have the eyes first, E4, then mouth, verbal response, that's V5, and the motor response, so M6, 4, 5, 6. That's quite easy. Now we have to remember the various scores allotted in each of these groups. So for the eye opening, we're going to have a short story over here. Imagine that you're going to, uh, going, you're going for a movie with your friend, but your friend wanted to take a nap. Now you go to his room because you want to wake him up. You open his room and he's already awake and he's got his clothes on. He's, he says, "Hey, let's go." So he spontaneously woke up without you having to wake him up or to say anything or do anything. So you say. Well, very good, you woke up on time, you give him a score of 4. What about a friend who was still sleeping and you had to call him up and wake him up? Hey, wake up, let's go, we are about to be late for the movie. Then you had to wake him up, so you're not very happy, so you give him a score of 3, that's E3. Then imagine that your friend would not wake up even if you call out his name. You have to either slap him or kick him. And wake him up and he wakes up like oh my god why did you kick me why did you slap me so you're very frustrated now you give him a score of e2 and what about the friend who does not wake up at all who's in deep sleep whatever you do whether you call him kick him throw him off the bed he's not going to wake up at all there won't be any response it's no response he won now let's let's take a look at the verbal response For verbal response, we're going to imagine the life of a person from the day he was born to adulthood. When a child is born, if you try to play with a child, you, if you tease the child, the newborn, he or she is not going to respond at all. There won't be any sounds. So, no response. Then the next one is, after a few months, four or five months, the child might start speaking some words like ba ba gu gu. Those are incomprehensible sounds. They don't mean anything. So that's V2. When a child is of 5 to 10 years, they go out to play, they meet people. They might have uh, some bad company who teach them bad words. So they come home and start using those bad inappropriate words at home. And that's V3. When they use bad words, you scold him or her. You say, don't speak like that. Don't do this, don't do that, don't speak like this. They start getting confused and in that teenage life, they have a very confused mentality. They don't know what to do in life. They don't know why you're scolding. So that's V4, confused state. And V5 is oriented. When a person comes into adulthood, majority of them, most of them are oriented. Now let's take a look at the motor response or the motor response. We're going to imagine that I am a very shy person who has been invited by a friend for a party. Now he has texted me, come for my birthday party, but I being very shy, I do not respond to him at all. Or maybe I'm busy, I don't respond. So that's M1, no response. The other situation is, I go to the party, but I don't know anyone over there. I'm very shy and I'm just standing like this over there in the corner. I'm not moving my hands, I'm not moving my legs. 
both are extended. That's M5. And then, since everyone is dancing, I get into the mood and I start moving my hands like this. But I'm still standing there in the corner, I'm not moving my legs. My hands are flexed, moving like this, you know, just... I see everyone dancing, so I also start doing like this. So this flexion, that's M3. What is M4? M4 is when the friend starts calling you. Hey, come and dance, come and dance. Why don't you join us? So your friend calling you to join them in a dance is a painful stimulus to you. It's mentally painful to you, right? Because you're very shy. So when your friend tries to pull you, you withdraw and you go back to your corner. Withdrawal to a painful stimulus. That's M4. Now, after a couple of hours, you've had a drink or two, but now you're in the mood and you join the dance floor, your friend calls you and then you go there. You localize from your uh, position to the dance floor. You have localized to the dance floor now. In response to that painful stimulus of your friend calling you again and again. So you have localized to the dance floor, that's M5. And now M6 is, now since you're in the dance floor, you start following your friend. Your friend says, Move like this, move like that, do this, do, do that, raise your hand. And you start obeying commands. You start following the dance steps. That's M6. I hope this helps you remember the Glasgow Coma scale easily. What I would like to point out is M3 is known as decorticate injury and M2 is known as decerebrate injury. How to remember this? M3 is better than M2, right? So M3 is the corticate, removal of the cortex of the brain is better than removal, removal of the whole cerebrum. So M3 is the decorticate and M2 is the cerebrate. That's how I remember it. Thanks for watching.